Thank you very much indeed, and a very warm welcome to our viewers across the country. We're here in Cape Town, and as Vio was saying, this is the morning after, the night before, the State of the Nation address that the President gave at Parliament yesterday. And he joins us uh, today for another in the series of the uh, New Age SABC News uh, business briefings. And today he's given us a unique opportunity. I think it's the first time we've had an opportunity to, as a public, as a grouping of business people and other interested parties, to be able to engage with the president straight after a State of a Nation address uh, 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 that he gave yesterday. So a unique opportunity for us and for you at home as well to participate in this conversation. And you can do that by text. The number to use is 33726. 33726 and uh, each text will cost you one rand fifty and uh, you can also uh, participate via twitter uh, hashtag tna biz brief if you want to participate and we'll be collating uh, your questions and putting them through to the president well let's hear from the president now perhaps there's some things that he'd like to add to uh, what he couldn't say yesterday and then after that we'll begin the process of putting those questions uh, to him so ladies and gentlemen please welcome the president of south africa his excellency dr jacob zuma Thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Peter. Thank you very much. Ministers and deputy ministers and captains of industry, <clears throat> the diplomatic corps, uh, everyone who's here, thank you very much indeed uh, for the opportunity. <clears throat> and I'm sure you will agree with me that uh, just a few hours ago, I was talking to many of you. I can't continue doing so. <laughs> you, you need to be saying something. But thank you for the opportunity. <clears throat> we have just issued the State of the Nation Address, where we outlined what uh, the government <clears throat> is putting across as his plan to try to develop this country, make it move forward. We talked about a number of things, and I'm sure as you were there, you will have an opportunity to ask questions, and I've got uh, ministers and deputy ministers who are here who will be uh, ready to answer the questions going forward. <laughs> They're part of the thinking. That is what should be known. <laughs> but we also believe in the collective leadership, uh, and therefore we put it in practice. But definitely we have said we wanted to do things differently. We wanted to do everything we can to ensure that South Africa moves forward. And certainly, as we came State of the Nation before and put what we thought would be our program, we had to report what has happened since then. We believe we have made progress, but of course there are challenges. In life, it is impossible to do everything and be perfect in everything. We certainly know that there are challenges. Our challenges are, in a sense, informed by our history. And therefore, our approach takes that into account. We also believe that uh, you cannot solve problems of centuries overnight. But what we've been saying, we've been calling all South Africans to participate in whatever way 
to make South Africa look better, to change the quality of lives, indeed to deepen our democracy. We believe we need to talk, to continue talking, to learn from one another. As cabinet of uh, this country, we, we have very robust discussions about the future of this country. And therefore, our last Lekhutla discussed very seriously <clears throat> all the inputs from departments and from leaders of departments, the ministers, to say, how do we take this country forward in every respect? And we have indeed felt we needed to take the question of our economy <clears throat> in a manner that we haven't done in the recent past. One of these is the infrastructure of the country, because we believe historically our infrastructure was structured to cater for a smaller population of the country. And that is why it cannot carry what is happening today. <clears throat> In the past, as you know, people were not allowed, certain people or the majority were not allowed to come to the urban areas. It was a crime. And therefore, even the manner in which we structured our cities and towns was different. We opened it with democracy. And therefore, you've got huge numbers that are coming. There is no infrastructure. But also, the growth of the country was measured in those terms. And therefore, the challenge becomes bigger. And we felt it was important we focus, <clears throat> firstly, as you know, we have five priorities that are very critical. And we believe that if we were able to address those priorities, we'd have addressed more than half of the problems of the country. But also, if we were to do so, we have to say, you cannot do that by democracy only. Politics must go with the economy. And therefore, if we are able to take bold decisions and policy decisions on politics, we've got to do it economically. And that's why our major program is infrastructure nationally. And we believe it is going to change the economic landscape of the country and connect to the continent as well as to the world, particularly the BRICS partners. And we believe our infrastructure program gives an opportunity to all of us. Firstly, to investors. You have an opportunity to invest. You can no longer say, what is it that I need to do? It is clear where you need to put your money. And if you do so, you open <clears throat> the base of the economy and therefore that creates employment. It therefore addresses the question of the poor, of the ordinary people who will find employment because you have participated in creating or enhancing the investment where government has created an enabling environment. So it is the partnership that works. We believe nobody can doubt that South Africa is there to stay. We cannot change. Nobody can say, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Politically, <clears throat> we are on course. We are playing our part. We are creating the environment. Play your part as business. Invest. We have discussed, for an example, the question of the obstacles, the difficulties of doing business in South Africa. We are opening it up so that people must have it easy to do business in this country. So really, all what we are calling you to do is take advantage of this period. It's a window period that we believe is opening, and we must all participate, all South Africans. Let us work and make our country better. And we can only do so by working together, by being positive about our country, 
about ourselves. We believe if we do so, the world will be positive towards South Africa. Some people argue that South Africa, in the bigger scheme of things, is not a big country. I don't agree. I think we're very big. I've always said if Japan, an island, could be a leading economy, why can't we grow? We have all the potential to do so. And I think if we work together, we can. Taking advantage of the continent of Africa, the BRICS, the South, the changing economic landscape, we must be there as South Africans. We must be part of that. And our infrastructure would be the thing. I listened recently to a presentation about maritime economies. And you don't want to hear that as a country strategically placed in the world, we do nothing in our waters to enhance our economy. Nothing. Ships pass. We are not even servicing them because we don't think there is a role to play. So there's massive opportunities that are coming. Let us take advantage. So instead of asking more questions, <clears throat> make more suggestions. How can we move forward? More importantly, invest to this country. You invest in this country, we are investing in our future. Thank you very much. Right, on your behalf, I'd just like to uh, say thank you very much uh, to the President for uh, just uh, giving us, uh, 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 I guess, a uh, refresher on what he spoke about yesterday and setting the scene for today's conversation, which all of you at home can participate in, and also the guests that we have here uh, who represent uh, people from all walks of life, mainly business. We also have politicians and uh, members of the diplomatic corps here and uh, non-governmental organizations. So let's begin that conversation now, and uh, let's see uh, some of the issues that are close to your heart. Mr. President, uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, yet again. And I'm just wondering, as you wake up this morning, was, was that the hardest speech that you had to come up with in terms of state of the nation? Because, you know, if we must be honest, it was a difficult year. I think all the speeches have been not easy. Uh, to speak about the nation, about the world, is not easy. Um, at, all, at all given times, you've got to deal with the, the nature of the country, what needs to be done, uh, and therefore you can't say this has been the most difficult. <clears throat> you know that uh, since 2008, the economic turndown has been a challenge. So it has been difficult uh, for all countries, not for one country. Even the old economies are having very difficult this time. So no one at this time can say, I'm doing a very easy speech. I think even the big countries have difficulties. I think what is critical in South Africa is how do we change South Africa? How do we make South Africa move forward? That is a critical thing. Of course, every government has to put plans in place. But also, it's not just the plans. Do we have the means to implement the plans? Uh, one of the critical points is how are we going to implement our plans? That is going to be our focus. And therefore, when we set the scene, we must be able <clears throat> to do what it takes in order to ensure that our plans are implemented. I think what we have said is what we believe we are in a position to do. And I think, as I said, this is a collective effort of the leadership of government, and we are ready to do so, and that's why I'm inviting business. Perhaps what is going to be the most difficult is to make business agree to join hands. Um, would you say, I mean, there's, a, there's been a shift in thinking, because a lot of people are going to remember the word infrastructure. Is that going to be the driving force to job creation and some of the other ambitions that, that you, do you have? It's going to be part of it, definitely. <clears throat> Without the infrastructure, and as we explained it, you would not be able to move forward. Uh, you know that infrastructure does bring uh, some <clears throat> impact. I think the recent example of 2010 uh, will be the most fresh 
example that with 2010 we were able to change the face of this country to a very large extent uh, and we believe that we were able to take lessons out of it for an example generally if you do infrastructure it takes a long time because there are all the procedures and bureaucracies but in 2010 we specifically said because there was time frames let us make the law that will make us achieve what we wanted to achieve and we've taken that lesson with the infrastructure that we're talking about we are going to take that law perhaps enhanced because we are giving ourselves some time frames within which we should be able to see these things so we have learned and i think we'll use that experience to ensure that uh, we move forward and therefore do things differently I'm sure this question is going to come up quite a bit, um, but perhaps just as a, as a starting point, this time last year, you talked about this being the year for jobs. Um, and when we look at the scorecard, we didn't do very well. <clears throat> I think we, we did very well in the face of the challenges globally, because things were not very smooth. Uh, the economy, particularly the Eurozone, has been in difficulties. I think it has impacted generally, <coughs> globally, in the economic world. The fact that we're able to create jobs, even within that kind of situation, and it tells you that the scorecard is not very bad. Otherwise, we'd have said we're not able to do anything. I think we've been able, <coughs> so we've been able to do so, but we are not saying we have done everything. But it's very little comfort to the millions of people out of work, uh, Mr. President. When we think about the numbers that are unemployed, and that number is growing, very few people <coughs> got jobs in 2011. What can we do differently? Because uh, would Im I would imagine that a massive shift in thinking is required here. This is what we've just done. <laughs> we've actually said, how do we create jobs? Mm. Uh, we must create the kind of projects that will be able to create jobs. We believe that the infrastructure you're talking about is massive, and it has to create jobs <clears throat> no matter what happens. What we're also going to be doing to business, we are going to be saying, can't we find a way that given the environment, the manner in which we would treat the difficulties in our companies, like, for an example, if there's a situation with dismissed workers, etc., that we become a little bit considerate in terms of, can we just say, go out, uh, I'm not happy with you, or whatever. That is why earlier we had the accord of labor, business, and government to say what happened to the uh, employees who lose their jobs. Can't we take them and train them and do something? I think that goes also uh, to <clears throat> the workers themselves. If there are difficulties, how do we handle our issues given the challenges at the moment so that we don't lose more jobs? Because it doesn't help if you create jobs on one side, you lose jobs on the other. So I think as a society, we've got to say, how do we deal with this emergency, with this problem, so that we are able to limit the impact of <clears throat> the negative thing that may come the way people will lose jobs. I think it's a question of the partnership that has to be strengthened and enhanced, as well as the understanding of the challenges that we face, all of us, government, business, and labor. All right, you've, you've mentioned this partnership. Uh, perhaps we'll hear <coughs> from business exactly what they need to be able to join hands with government and uh, people on the ground. Uh, we'll do that uh, after the break. We're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll continue uh, with this conversation. And remember, you at home, as well as uh, members of the audience here, can participate in this conversation. And after the break, we will continue and start to get those questions. Let's take a break.